You're listening to KEXP. We're at 90.3 FM in Seattle and streaming worldwide at KEXP.org. We're a listener-powered radio station. Thanks to our wonderful supporters, we're able to bring you sessions like the one just about to happen. I'm so excited. It's Possels live on KEXP. Welcome. Thank you. So nice to have you here. Thanks for having us. Did I say that right? <laughs> How do they say it in Berlin? Um. Parcels. Parcels. Yeah. Parcels. All right. Well, I'm excited to hear some music from your new album, Day Night, or albums, as I should say. And we'll talk about that more later. But Parcels live on KEXP. Take it away.
You're listening to Parcels live on KEXP.
I want to love a man I want to kill the past I want to stop the sand I want another chance But one is all you have But if once more I could feel What I felt before I'd hold it like it's real I'd never let it fall Everything looks nice Nothing is unwell But once the fruit of God Forever live in hell And once you choose a side There's nothing left to win And once a lover dies Never love again mm, So beautiful. You're listening to Parcels Live on KEXP. I am so in my happy place right now. That was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. It's great to have you here. And your fabulous new record, Day Night, you've just featured songs from that, is an ambitious 19 songs long. I understand winnowed down from a staggering 150 or so demos. And you've mentioned that you don't really think of it as a double album, but sort of like two distinct albums that complement each other. And I'm wondering what this epic undertaking was like and how these two beautiful pieces of art relate to one another. Yeah, it was, um, it started, I think, just with the idea that always is the case, trying to put an album together. We have so many ideas and I think for the first album we had trouble trying to bring it all together and we were starting to make decisions based on trying to bring everything together. Um, and that was just a thing that I think was subconscious and when we were coming in to make a, a new album, it was like, oh, let's make two because that'll be easier. <laughs> and then also if you make two albums that are opposite each other, it means that you could go, you know, further into each opposite. It kind of broadened the, the, the spectrum for us. Um, so with that in mind, I think day and night kind of just made its way into our minds. And then, of course, it was just a, a great way of... Um, I don't know, having some sort of canvas, some sort of backdrop to, to write songs to. Um, we were really inspired by, I mean, we're, we're Australian, so we kind of grew up in, in nature and it's a very big part of us is just that, um, you know, the, the desert and the stillness and then the, the jungle and I don't know, it's, it's very much in, in us, that, that, that vibe, so. I had read somewhere that you said you were trying to paint landscapes with the music. And of course, as you said, Australia is so beautiful in its natural environment and has so many different types of natural environment. And I understand that you're living in Berlin, but you went to Australia to start working on this record. And what was behind the decision to do that? To move to Berlin or to... To go, to, uh, to go back to Australia to start working on this record. So, yeah, we, we started writing the record in Australia, but then we kind of recorded it all in Europe, and it was like a long process. But um, I think it was just a very natural thing to go back to Australia and find some sort of home, or at least look for some sort of home during this kind of crazy time. 
I'm not sure if we really found it, but that was part of the writing process and all of us in a house in the rainforest kind of getting inspired by this place that, that we've kind of been yearning for living in Europe. What inspired the move to Berlin? You went there quite young, I think. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty random. We, were, um, <laughs> we wanted to go pretty far from where we grew up. We wanted to see something new. We wanted to be in Europe. Um, and we kind of closed our eyes and found Berlin on a map, more or less. We knew it was cheap and that there was dance music there, but other than that, it was just fresh out of high school going for it, you know. And how has that experience been? Has it treated you well? Yeah, I'd say it has. It's been, it's been nearly seven years now since we left Australia and really moved there to be in this band. So there's been so many ups and so many downs and we've, We've changed a hundred times over, so. Yeah. Well, you must be a very tight unit to all want to move there together. And it seems like you're an incredibly collaborative project, each contributing ideas and demos and these beautiful voices come together, which just make me so happy. How does your writing process work with five really talented contributors? It's forever changing. I feel like our philosophy in a way is just to keep moving, keep changing everything. Um, we can never really play the same thing twice um, because we get bored really easily. Um, but the, the writing process for, for these two albums was just making demos um, with a laptop and like a keyboard. Um, I know for myself, I, I didn't want to get too into the production world, so I minimized what I had um, which was just, yeah, like a, a dodgy little keyboard and a guitar. And we just put in demos into like a bank, uh, you know, like Dropbox. Shout out to Dropbox. Um, and yeah, and then we, we had so many. That, that, was, that was a real struggle, trying to get that. You know, it was around 150 demos down, whittling them down. I think we got it down to 40 and we rehearsed 40 songs in the rehearsal room and slowly we could figure that some songs were sounding like others so would you go oh what's the best song out of those two and slowly you, you would would make our way to 20 and then we got to 19 and whatever is it a painful <laughs> process to leave any behind oh so painful <laughs> yeah yeah it can be really sad <laughs> yeah Never doing that again, by the way. That, that was... <laughs> we'll do it differently next time. Well, you've done it differently from record to record. I understand you tried to capture the live sound on this record and your other record, your first record, was much more sort of studio produced. And I have to say, the musicianship right here today is incredible. And I understand you sort of had a, a boot camp of sorts and decided you wanted to relearn your instruments and mm -hmm. became somewhat of a cover band. And how did you push yourself to step outside your creative comfort zone into these new distinct styles that you were looking into? Yeah, I mean... That was a... It was a say? beautiful time and, and it definitely wasn't my idea. I forget whose idea it was, but it was one day it was just like, you know what, we've got a bit of time before recording. Let's let's investigate. Like let's see what these other bands that we all love have been doing. Like let's play the parts exact, like note for note. And then and then slowly, you know, we're not the best cover band because slowly it's like, mm, I want to put a little bit of my own thing in here. But it was so interesting to be like, oh, you know, you think you know a song and then you really play it and you're like, wow, it's got such a different vibe. And, and we went f through all the different genres that we love. And afterwards, like, I think we all just felt like, wow, like I have so much more knowledge for my own instrument. And, um, and now I'm ready to kind of, you know, look at how we're just like making our mark on this whole world of music and like what can we bring to the table that, that we haven't seen in all these different genres that we've just played. We what, ha haven't been able to achieve that. <laughs> we're just copying. What are some of the bands you can think of off the top of your head that everybody just really had fun playing around with? Uh, Donny Hathaway comes to mind. Yeah. There was one particular album of Donny Hathaway that we were just... Live. Live. Yeah. Yeah. It's really that, fun that was the name. 
We played uh, some BB King. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a struggle. I'm definitely not a blues drummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a great way of us looking at like getting everyone to look at the other instruments too because it's such a conversation, this whole playing music together and it's so a part of that, you know. I gotta, we, we're all got to be listening to each other. Um, so that was a great way of getting that dialed in. I had also heard you'd played around with some Earth, Wind and & Fire and I can't tell you how much I'd love it if you broke into an Earth, Wind & Fire song right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I feel like yeah. we'd, it's a... There's big shoes to fill there. We, I think we'd be a bit scared to try out an Earth, Wind & Fire group. Well, you guys sound wonderful, and one day someone's going to be covering you and thinking the same thing. Very big shoes to fill. Thank you so much for that fabulous session for us today. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. Cheers. You've been listening to Parcels, the new album, Day Night, a wonderful release out on Because Music. And again, thank you so much to our wonderful listeners who power KEXP. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you get notification every time we release a wonderful video like the one that will be coming soon with Parcels. Thank you so much for tuning in to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.